Look what I got here, Bob. A Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. Your favorite. Come on, Bob, cheer up, will ya? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich from Weird Al's UHF, assembled easily enough from these three readily available sundries. Simply fetch a solo Twinkie from its protective plastic packaging, flip it upside down, and partially vivisect it by virtue of a disposable plastic knife, and into this newly formed Twinkie cavity deposit our hot dog. And last but certainly not least, we're going to drape a flowery ribbon of spray cheese across the top, which I thought this was going to make that air all noise when I sprayed it out, but it was deadly silent. It was kind of creepy. And there you have it, the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. Be sure to examine it from all angles, and all there is left to do is take a bite. Babish is about to take a bite of the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. I wonder what colorful vocabulary and aspersive alliteration he's going to use to make fun of this god-awful... It's, it's, uh, it's actually pretty good. Like, I'm not even bullshitting. It's actually really quite good. It's sweet, it's salty, it's a member of the Clean Plate Club, and I quit my job. I'm kidding, of course. Not about it being good, but about me quitting my job. I am going to try to make a gourmet version of this, which really comes down to making homemade spray cheese and a savory Twinkie of some kind. Upon inspection, we can see that it's a kind of greasy sponge cake with a kind of greasy filling. So I'm thinking that we make a spicy mustard cheddar spray cheese and a Parmesan chiffon cake with cream cheese filling. Now, as you can see, the Twinkie molds that I got are kind of big, so they're going to be kind of big. Sorry about that. But here we go with the Parmesan chiffon cake. I'm going to measure out four and a quarter ounces or about one cup of all-purpose flour. Add to it one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and two ounces of finely grated Parmesan cheese. Ideally, you want to use the pre-grated stuff in the tub, but if all you have is a block of Parmesan cheese, just grate it as finely as you can. Then for a little extra flavor and crunch, I'm going to add a quarter cup or about one ounce of coarse ground cornmeal. Then I'm going to toss this together by hand to make sure that everything is evenly distributed and there are no cheese clumps, and then it's time to start dealing with the wet stuff. First, three eggs, whose yolks and whites we're going to separate, placing the whites into the bowl of a stand mixer that we're going to start beating with a wire whisk on high speed. As it becomes puffy and light, we're going to slowly add two teaspoons of granulated sugar, effectively creating a meringue that is going to keep our cake batter light and airy. Once the egg whites are firm and glossy and have reached the stiff peak stage, go ahead and set that aside and we're going to add our reserved egg yolks to our dry ingredients, along with six tablespoons or three ounces of melted butter mixed together with one cup of whole milk so as to cool it down. Add this also to the dry ingredients and whisk everything together thoroughly until it's very smooth before adding the egg whites and gently folding them into the batter. You want to fold rather than mix so you don't deflate the egg whites because the baking powder is going to give some rise to the cake, but most of the cake's body is going to come from these egg whites. We're then going to pour it directly into our oversized Twinkie molds, all the way up to the brim, being sure to smooth out the top, and then we're dropping these in a preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 30 to 40 minutes until they're deeply brown, risen, and a toothpick inserted into the thickest point emerges clean. And as you can see, it's a little dark, but it has the makings of a gourmet savory Twinkie, a sentence that I never thought I'd say. While we let that cool completely, we're going to make our cream cheese filling, which is pretty much just going to be whipped cream cheese. So we're going to beat eight ounces of room temperature cream cheese in the bowl of a stand mixer, along with two to three tablespoons of half and half, scraping down the sides and making sure that everybody is whipped and incorporated and light and airy and all that good stuff. Plop that into a piping bag and give it the old Great British Bake Off spin a and set it aside so we can make our homemade spray cheese into a medium bowl. Goes one cup of heavy cream along with a few teeping, teeping tablespoons? Heaping tablespoons. That was a real outtake. I just thought I'd leave that in there. A few heaping tablespoons of Coleman's hot mustard and cheddar cheese powder. Tiny whisk until smooth and add more as necessary until it tastes good and resembles the cheese spray in color and really just color. Why did I spray this in my hand? Not sure. Grab your whipped cream siphon and fill it halfway with your cheesy mustardy shit. Charge it with a nitrous canister and give it a little shake. Go ahead and check it for spray consistency and shake it a little more if it's not thick enough. Now, finally, we reach the assembly stage. Twinkies are filled by way of a series of nozzles inserted into their bottoms. So too shall we fill our savory Twinkie with whipped cream cheese. Once filled, it's time to make a similar incision along the top to accommodate our sausage. In this case, I'm going with a spicy chorizo to combat all the richness and cheesiness. Now we simply just gotta, just gotta get it in there. The cornmeal parmesan batter has proven to create a rather robust Twinkie, but we got it in there. And go ahead and top with our spray cheese. Uh, uh, 
disaster. Not entirely sure why that happened, but don't let that slow you down. Just go ahead and clean the cheese explosion off your person. And well, it might not be pretty, but neither was the original. I present to you the Babish Wiener Sandwich. That sounded better in my head. And uh, it's, it's not bad. It's spicy and it's cheesy and it's savory, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the original is better. You heard it here, Weird Al's imagination is a better chef than I am. <laughs>